Hello, welcome to Corel Draw for Laser Engraving, session number three. I'm Jimmy Dubose, and we're going to cover several topics in this session. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's say that we have a layout where we want to engrave on this crescent wrench. Uh, but I'm not sure if I know where it's going to engrave, so I would really like to do a trial run with my laser. So there's an easy way to do this uh, with Corel Draw. What I can do is simply click on my text, and then I can go over to my box tool over here in my toolkit, and then holding down my shift key, I can double click. Now what that's done is it's created a box exactly around my text. So whenever I'm ready, I can simply send this over to the laser. So if we go output to print, we click on our preferences, what you want to do is send over just the vector. You don't need to send over the raster portion. And then you use a slow speed and no power, but of course the power really doesn't matter because we'll leave a lid open. And it'll basically, you send it over and it'll trace that box out and you can reposition the wrench if needed until that box traces the area where you want to engrave. At that point, just simply come back over here and change to raster and go ahead and run your job and it'll engrave the text where you want it. When you're laying out a job like this text, like this job right here, and you want to uh, make sure that everything's going to engrave the way you expect it. Well, when Corel Draw, when you output to print, it actually shows you a preview of that image according to the plate size in the driver. So when I go to print, you'll notice right now in this particular um, print dialog is that I only see part of my image. And the reason for that is that my plate size does not correspond to the size that I have within Corel Draw. If again, I click on my preferences button, and then I come back over here and I set this size inside the driver to match the size that I have inside Corel Draw, which in this case is going to be 5.02 by 10.02. When I click on OK, you'll see the preview adjusts, showing me that it's actually the, the layout that I want, it's the size that I want. You know this preview, if you don't have this, if you come over and you click on this little button right here, see it disappears. But if I come back and I click on that button, it gives me a full preview of the plate before I send it over to print. So let's say that I have this layout here and I want to do multiples of this across a page, or let's say if I'm just doing one, I want to make sure that it just automatically engraves in the upper left hand corner. What we can do is we can create what's called an imposition layout that'll make that happen. So under the file menu, you come down, you click on print preview. And as you see, this gives me a print preview of the, of the actual item on the size that I have inside the driver. So let's say I want this to be in the upper left-hand corner. I come over and I select my imposition layout tool over here on the left. And then I change from my roll-up menu here. I come back and I select edit margins. So by default, CorelDRAW centers everything in the page. I want to disable that. So I'm going ahead and click on auto margins to turn it off. And as you can see, it puts it in the upper left-hand corner. If I want to see a preview of that, if I go ahead and go back to basic settings, and then I come back and I click on preview, you can see my image right up here in the upper left-hand corner. So let's say I want to save that layout. What I can do is I can click on the plus key right here to save my position layout. And I can give it a name. We like to put a tilde in front of the name so that it always puts it at the bottom of the list. So if I type in upper left one by one, I can save that setting and use it for in the future. I can also duplicate this now. So if you see here, up here, I can actually create columns and rows. So let's go ahead and create that across. Okay, let's turn off the other preview and let's go ahead and create some down. So let's go ahead and and then if we look at our preview, you can see it shows all of my tags uh, basically created in a multiple across that plate size. 
If we decide we want to use that setting in the future, that uh, imposition layout, when I go to File and I come down to Print, under the Layout tab, you'll see that I'll have that listed in here as far as my imposition layouts. See, I have upper left, one by one. And you can simply select that and it'll print it in the upper left hand corner. So imposition layout's a very useful tool. That's something that we'll expand on in one of our next sessions uh, to move that, uh, I'm sorry, to work that in conjunction with the uh, print merge tool. So let's talk about running uh, some different layouts. If you go to run this particular layout the way it's uh, oriented on your laser, what will happen is it'll take much longer to run than if we could turn it sideways. So at this point, if this runs in my X direction, basically from left to right, it's going to basically take a long time to run this six inch scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my orientation up here. I'm going to change it to landscape. And you can see that my page is actually has actually uh, rotated 90 degrees. Now I want to rotate my layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go up to Object, and I'm going to group everything together. Next, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And it's going to rotate 90 degrees. And it's going to go ahead and run at this, at this design. Now, if I want to rotate it the other direction, I could actually rotate this 270 degrees. And now you can send this over to engrave and it's going to engrave much faster because the X direction axis is much faster than the Y direction. So anything that's laid out landscape is going to engrave much faster than anything that I might engrave uh, portrait. We're going to talk about setting up uh, different layouts for uh, the cylindrical attachment. Um, or rotary attachment, if you will. And so when you go to put in something into your rotary attachment, you want to make sure that it's level. So you can see here in these pictures that I have a level right here in this layout that I'm trying to basically level this in because this is a conical shape so that it's level. And on the epilogue rotary attachment, we have this scissor lift here with a handle that we can rotate until we get that perfectly level. And that's going to allow it to engrave uh, across the entire surface rather than it to get out of focus and only engrave a portion of our tumbler. So once you get it level, the next step is if you have something like an embossed uh, brand name like Yeti or some other manufacturer, you want to make sure that your engraving is going to be centered above that mark. So what you do is you basically disable your XY motors so that you can actually move your lens carriage from left to right then you basically have your red dot pointer turned on. Then next you rotate the tumbler such that that red dot pointer is centered inside the, the actual brand name or the embossed area. And you can see here that we actually have the red dot pointer centered between the E and the T. Once you do that, your next step is to move the red dot pointer into the center of where you want to actually engrave. You can see our red dot pointer is in the center of where I want to engrave. Once you do that, then you set your home position. Looking at our layout that we have here, you can see that I have a plate size of four and a half by three and a half. I don't actually have the full circumference of that tumbler laid out in CorelDRAW. There's no need to if I'm only marking on one side. With an epilogue, <clears throat> with an epilogue rotary attachment, there's no need for that. So what we do is we basically lay out a plate that's equal to a label that would be on that rotary attachment. So in this case, four and a half inches wide by three and a half inches tall. And everything is turned sideways because our tumbler is turned sideways. You can see here that I actually put some guidelines to show me the center of my marking area. These are just for visual reference. And then I have my layout laid out so it's centered inside the, the actual job of the plate itself. When we go to print, and we select our printer that we want to use, you want to make sure that you select center center. So this center center selection is going to correspond to the home position that we set on the tumbler itself using the red dot pointer. 
What if you want to engrave on both sides of the tumbler in a single job? That's certainly easy to do. You just have to take a few steps first. So you can see here in my design, I actually printed out this design. And this was set up such that I have crosshairs and circles that are concentric. And what I did is I centered one line on the actual name brand right here. So that the E and the T are centered on this line that you see right here. Next, I put some tape on the one side that's 90 degrees from it. This is in between the front and the back side. I took a Sharpie and I made a mark equal with this particular line. I took the tumbler at that point and put it into my rotary attachment. And as you can see here, I used the red dot pointer to align to my mark. And you can see that Yeti is actually facing, the brand name is facing forward. So when it goes to engrave, it's going to engrave the front side and the back side all at the same time. Looking at this layout, I'm explaining in this particular job how you're going to create your job. So we need to get the full circumference of the, of the object itself uh, to lay out. And the reason for that is because I'm engraved on the front side and I'm engraved on the back side. So how do you do that? Well, you, if you get the circumference, you basically measure the diameter in the center of where you want to engrave, multiply that by pi, and that gives you the tumbler circumference. As you can see here, our circumference is 10.8. All right, my marking area as far as I, you could say how tall or how wide it is on the tumbler is four inches. Now I have to decide how can I actually lay out my, my front side and my back side such that they're on opposite sides of the tumbler. It's pretty simple actually. You take the 10.8 inches and you divide it by four. Because think about it, you're, if you divide it in half, this is in the center here, you divide it by four, so what's going to happen is that 2.7 inches is going to be centered on the front side. So my artwork is going to be centered at 2.7 inches. That's my front side. As you can see here, I have reference. We have where the Yeti or Arctic or emboss is front facing forward, basically. Next, what you do is you now take that measurement, multiply it by three, so this is now 75% of the full circumference, and you center your artwork at that point. In this case, it's 8.1 inches. So when I go to print this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna engrave the front side, and it's gonna keep rotating around, it's gonna engrave the back side. So again, at 25% of the circumference, and then you come back and do it at 75% of the circumference. And then this full, this is if you had a label that you peeled off of that rotary, or the cylinder, oh, I'm sorry. This is if a label that you pulled off of the cylindrical item and wrapped it, wrapped it around, laid it out flat. Another adjustment that you might run into every so often is engraving on conical items. So when you have a conical item, this top portion of this glass is actually on the drive wheels. So if you, if you engrave something, what will happen is that you'll see that your object will differ. If I engrave something at the bottom of this glass, you'll find that it's condensed. And it's condensed because the diameter at the bottom of this glass is smaller than the diameter at the top. I'm going to show you how to compensate for that. Likewise, if you have this tumbler over here, and let's say that someone wanted their name engraved at the very bottom. Well, your diameter up here is what's on the drive disk, and you have a much smaller diameter down here. Again, your text will be condensed. So you have to make a compensation. This is a pretty complicated drawing, but it's, it's, it looks complicated, but it's really not. Um, so let's assume that we have our pint glass here that we're going to engrave on. And we're going to engrave our Maltese cross image on here, but we want to make a compensation such that it doesn't look condensed when we go to engrave it. So you have to take two measurements. First of all, your first measurement is going to be on the drive side. So if we look at this layout, you can see that if I measure at the motor drive side, I have a diameter of 3.4 inches. Okay. Then you take another measurement in the center of where you want your engraving to be. So you might take a set of calipers to make this measurement, and you have a diameter of 2.99 inches. So 
So now we have to create a ratio of how much to adjust our image. So first you take the diameter at the motor drive, you divide it by the diameter at the image center, and this gives us a ratio. So we take that ratio, so actual measurements, we took 3.4 inches divided by 2.99, and we get a ratio of 1.14. This ratio is then used to adjust our artwork. So our artwork is actually 2.819. That's how actually in this measurement, our vertical measurement of the artwork, that's what it comes out to be. We multiply that by our ratio that we just discovered and we find out what the adjustment needs to be. So if I select this artwork and I have to make sure that I don't have my ratio locked. So I have to unlock my ratio. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the vertical measurement of my object from 2.819 to 3.21. And you can see on the screen that this looks stretched, okay? That, that it looks stretched and it is stretched, but when you actually engrave it on the pint glass, it's gonna look normal. So rather than being condensed to follow the actual shape of the glass as the, as the diameter decreases, we've actually made a compensation now so that it comes out looking normal, not condensed. The next topic we're going to cover is raster to vector conversion. So I have an art, some artwork here. We're going, to, we're going to basically go through these two different examples. Whenever I select this object, if you look down here at the bottom, you can see that it's a JPEG and it's an RGB JPEG. We're going to take the same steps for each one of these pieces of artwork. And these are steps that I've used several times and I find it works most consistently if you take these simple steps to go through and you get a good result at the end. So this is raster artwork I wanna convert over to vector so it's fully scalable. First thing I need to do is I need to set it to the size it's actually gonna engrave. So make sure that your ratio is locked and we're gonna change the size to two and a half inches. Next, I'm gonna to go to bitmaps and I'm gonna to go to resample Now with a color image, if we resample it, it'll actually smooth out the, the actual pixels a little bit and make the pixels smaller so that when we go to our trace final option, it's gonna give us a smoother curve. I always wanna make sure that my, my resolution is at least 300 DPI. So I'm gonna change this to 300 DPI. I'm gonna click on okay. So resample actually allows me to set the resolution at whatever the current size is. Next, we're gonna to go to bitmaps, we're gonna to go to mode, and we're gonna to convert to black and white. We want line art as our conversion method. For most drawings, we want our threshold set here in the middle. What threshold does is if you have this number increased, it keeps more of the grays in the image. If you decrease it, it throws away more of the grays. So, if I wanted to, say I had a pencil drawing and I was losing a lot of detail, I could increase this threshold and it's gonna keep more of those light grays or details inside my image. In this case, we're gonna leave it right here in the middle. Click OK. In our property bar, we already have trace as an option. We wanna do an outline trace and I wanna use clip art. In the trace dialog, you have the original image up here at the top and you have your trace result down here at the bottom. You see the checkerboard in the back shows that the background is transparent. I really wanna have the inside of the image transparent as well. So over here on the right hand side, I want to remove the color from the entire image. I also want to make sure that I select delete the original image. I'm not gonna need the, the JPEG image once I do the trace. I'll have the finished result that I want. Click on okay. Now, if we zoom in on this object, you can see that it's not perfect, but it's much, much better than my original result. And now it's a vector, so I could even 
do an outline if I need to. If I need to cut this out of acrylic, I need to cut it out of some other material. Or of course, I can change the shade or the color if I'd like. Let's go through those steps again. Step one, you want to make sure that you have the size of the image what you want. You want to make sure that you have the ratio locked. So let's say that I want the size of this object to be three inches tall. Our next step, go to bitmaps. Come down and select resample. As I mentioned before, if this is a color image, not if it's a monochrome, but if it's a color image, we can smooth the image by increasing the resolution. I'm going to change this to 300 dpi at the size that I'm actually engraving here. Next step, let's go to bitmaps. Let's go to mode. Let's do select black and white. So we're going to convert this to black and white. We're going to use conversion method line art. Threshold's going to be in the middle. Click OK. Now we'll go to trace bitmap, outline trace, clip art option. As I mentioned before, this is my original image and over here on the right is my traced image. You can see that inside the deer's antlers, we don't have checkerboard. So I want to actually make that transparent. Let's go ahead and let's select color from entire image of what we want to remove. Again, we want to delete the original image. So make sure that's selected. And we have our finished result. This is a true vector, so now I can engrave this at any size. I can now do a vector cutout. I have all kinds of options available to me once I convert the artwork to vector. Our next topic is welding. I have three different examples here we're going to walk through uh, for welding, and you'll be able to see some of the features, and this is a very easy thing to do. It's one of the great features within CorelDRAW. I have some text here and I want to create a desk plate. So I have the text Sam Houston here. I want to turn off the fill. So if you realize over here in our toolkit, if I actually left click on the slash and then I come down and I right click on red, we have a red outline. I have a box here that I've drawn that's going to become my base. I'm going to use my cursor key to nudge that up so that it just touches the bottom of my text. That little bit of overlap that you can see here is going to be cut away whenever we weld. I'm going to select both of those items together and I'm going to go up to alignment and we want to align those horizontally. Now that they're aligned, up here in my property bar, you can see that I have two objects selected. And the property bar is a context sensitive area in the CorelDRAW screen. And it assumes, okay, you have two vector items that are overlapping. Uh, you might want to weld those. So we're going to go ahead and select weld. And as you can see, this is now one object. So I could use this to cut out of some quarter inch thick acrylic or some wood, and it could be a freestanding desk plate that we put on somebody's desk. The next project I want to do is a Christmas ornament. For purposes of alignment, I want these circles, these two circles I have here, I want those to be a specific X center. So over here, as you can see, I can set that home position I want the X amount to be at 5.5 inches. I also want to come over and I want to grab a guideline from my left ruler, move this over and I'm going to set that to 5.5 inches. I have this artwork now that I'm going to position over my inside circle. Now, I purposely selected this artwork because it's not symmetrical. If I set this to 5.5 inches, 
you can see that the manger scene, the cross on top of the manger is not centered with my circle, but I really want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nudge this using my cursor keys until I get that visually centered. It's not exactly right, so let's deselect. Let's change my nudge amount. Let's change that to 10 thousandths. Let's select my artwork again, and let's go ahead and nudge that back until it looks like it's probably about as good as I'm going to get it. But now I want to nudge this down too because I want the scene to, to go straight across. So right over here, I can see that if that was up any higher, I would actually be able to see that it's a, a rectangle at the bottom. I don't want it to, to look like that. So now that we have everything selected, I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to click on the circles. And as you can see here, you've got the weld option. Oh, I didn't want to use that one. So let's undo. And I think what I need to do is I need to break apart this image. So that's something that you can run across when you're welding different items. So now we have different options on weld. So I think that I might want to use one of these, uh, front minus back or back minus front. Let's try this one. No, I don't want that one, so I'm going to undo. Let's try this one. That's exactly what I want. On a Christmas ornament, we want to have an eyelet. So I have these two objects here, these two circles. I'm going to select both of them. And I'm going to go up to Object, I'm going to go to Align, and I want to align them vertically. And then I go back up to Object, go back to Align and Distribute, and align them horizontally. Up here in the Property Bar, I want to combine those together. I also want to combine all these objects together. CorelDRAW works much better if you're only trying to weld two objects at a time. When you start to add more than two objects, it's really hard to get the desired result. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag, I'm going to drag this piece where it overlaps on the circle. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to click on the bottom object. and let's align those horizontally. Finally, we're going to weld that. And we have our finished Christmas ornament. For our next project, we're going to create a cake topper. So I have a nice script font here, and I'm going to weld all these characters together, and we're going to use them as a cake topper. Whenever I look at this image, I want to make sure that I can make a compensation for it because this area is too brittle. Right, or could potentially be too brittle. See how thin the text is? So what we want to do is we want to use contour to make that compensation. So I'm going to go up to the effects menu. And as you can see, I have contour right here as an option. I've already done that, so I have contour over here in my dockers. So I have one step. And in this case, I'm going to use 30 thousandths as my contour um, offset. And let's go ahead and apply that. As I zoom in, you can see I have a red outline that makes all my areas much thicker here. I need to delete the original portion of this. So let's go up to Object and select Break Contour Group Apart. Next, let's click on the black portion of the text and let's delete that. Let's go ahead and let's turn off the white fill that we have here. All right, so what I want to do is I want to actually take this ever after and touch the top happily text up here and I want to overlap those and weld them. So let's go ahead and select this. So we want to move this section up. So I'm going to select it. I want to go up to object and I want to break the curve apart. So let's select ever this group of, of items here and let's go ahead and let's combine them. Let's select this group of items here and let's again combine those. 
let's select the uh, happily text up at the top and let's also combine those. Now let's go ahead and move this section up until it overlaps on the H and let's hold our shift key down and let's select happily and let's weld it. As you can see now those parts are connected. Let's do the same thing with after. Let's go ahead and move this up until we have a nice overlap there. Hold down my shift key and select the text that we've already welded and let's weld this. Again, those are now connected. All right. So I want to take my heart that I have here now, and I'm going to position this in this area so that we can, we can actually get this connected and give a little more support. So sometimes you could fit the heart here in the middle, but I can't do that with this particular layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it overlap here, and I'm going to go ahead and get it overlap there. Now I need to do the bottom of my cake topper before I do that. I want to get it perfectly centered. So let's go ahead and get the heart where we want it. That looks pretty good. So if you zoom in here, you can see that I'm overlapping the E and the R, and I'm overlapping the A here. Now I have my stem, if you will. Um, I really want this to be rounded at the bottom. See how this is not rounded? So with this box, I can actually go and select round corners, and I can set my radius for that round corner. Um, let's go ahead and type in 0.187. So now I have rounded corners. So when this actually goes into the cake, it actually is going to be rounded. It's going to go on much smoother than if it was a square corner. Let's and bring this down where it's overlapping. And let's hold down my shift key and we'll click on the heart. Let's go up to object, align and distribute. And let's go ahead and align that to the center. Now these two objects are selected by themselves. I'm gonna weld those together. Now I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna select my text and I'm gonna weld those together. So what we have here is we have a finished cake topper. For my next example, I'm gonna create from this JPEG, I'm gonna create a keychain. So I have a nice JPEG here. I want to create a vector out of this. We're gonna go through the same steps we did before for the raster to vector conversion. So let's go up to bitmaps and let's resample the image. It's already at 300 DPI, so actually we don't have to change anything there. Next, we're gonna to go to bitmaps and we're gonna come down to mode, convert it to black and white. Line art is our conversion method. Let's go to trace now and we wanna do an outline trace, and we wanna do clip art. Inside the trace dialog, if you remember, we wanna have transparent background. So we're going to change to remove color from entire image. We wanna make sure that we have delete original selected. And now we have our vector. So this is the portion that we would engrave if we were doing this on an acrylic keychain, for example. But I need the cutout portion. So for uh, the next step, I need to go up to the object menu. And I need to go under shaping. And I'm going to use boundary. This step created a boundary around my original image. But all the inside vectors, it didn't use those. It threw them away. That boundary is too close to my engraved edge. I really need to have a step outside of this image. If you remember under the effects menu, we had that option for contour. We're gonna use contour again. So over here in my Docker, I have the contour alignment. This time though, I'm going to use a different offset. And before I do that, I wanna change my color so we can see the difference. I'm gonna change my current outline to blue. So again, if you zoom in here, you can see I have a blue outline. I'm gonna change my offset to 90 thousandths. 
I'm doing a one single step and I'm going to the outside. Let's click on apply. I need to break apart the contour group and throw away the blue outline that we got from using shaping and, um, and creating that, that original outline. So we're gonna go to object, we're gonna break contour group apart. I'm going to select the blue outline and I'm going to delete it. I'm almost done. I need to create an eyelet. So let's go to my circle tool. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm gonna drag a perfect circle. I'm gonna drag a second circle. I'm gonna select those two items and I'm gonna go up to my object menu, align and distribute. We're going to align things vertically. Then we're gonna go back up there and we're gonna to go to align and distribute and we're gonna align them horizontally. Now I'm going to combine those together right up here in my property bar. I'm going to move this object now where I want it to overlap for my key ring, right over here on the bulldog's ear. Hold down my shift key. Now I have both objects selected. I want to select weld. That's the end of our session number three. Uh, thank you very much for attending and look forward to coming and attending our session number four. Uh, thank you very much.